Welcome to Edgewater House, a home being built to the passive house standard in Saco, Maine. We chose Logic's brand Platinum Series ICF blocks for the foundation because we like the features, including the embedded graphite particles that provide a 23% increase in R value for the same size block. Yep, it's no sweat moving and stacking these blocks. Kyle Parent helped set the first course of block on the footers. So Kyle, what was the first thing that you did in order to actually start stacking the block here? Good morning. Uh, what we did was we had the points set once again by the uh, surveyor and we then went around the perimeter, snapped chalk lines, installed a 2x4 on the exterior perimeter of the foundation. The pink material you see here is high density XPS foam. Holes were drilled through the XPS into the footer to attach rebar. The XPS creates a thermal break between the footer and the foundation. Emil squirts some epoxy into the holes while Ed and Tyson secure the rebar dowels. Logix has a preformed 90 degree corner that is ready to go so when you start in your corner you have a true 90 degree and it also they make a left and a right hand so you have a natural um, uh, a natural splice in your block kind of like the old school bricks and blocks the splices are, are offset. The corner here is thickened up on the outer edge and the, there's uh, internal webbing that braces that. That is correct which also incorporates on the outside it's hard to see but this internal web also incorporates a plastic stud every every eight inches so if you were to go above grade or to finish off your basement it's ready for sheetrock immediately mm -hmm. there's no internal strap there's no strapping required after this you can sheetrock the inside put some a cultured stone mm -hmm. right over the styrofoam mm -hmm. block um, if you'll notice the blocks are 16 inches tall they have a male female connection for successive courses oh, okay. whereby they, they nest neatly on what I would call the male and female pegs mm -hmm. and that is how um, the blocks stack and that gives them lateral structural integrity. Um, on a first course the block sits as such. You have a 36 inch zip tie which would in turn go around and that together. locks the adjacent blocks together on your first course to make sure you're tight. <laughs> Number four rebar was placed horizontally in each course of block. It snaps into the plastic webbing inside the block. Two by fours were also added to pin the interior side of the block. Got here is an open corner, open that the blocks aren't linked together, they're just uh, cut to fit in tight, but they are, as I walk around, they are, it's actually an open, unsecured corner. Correct. What you'll notice is the bubble is off slightly. Um, the way we're going to correct this later on in the project is when you see us install our bracing, there's an adjustable turnbuckle and we'll be able to turn in or out a wall that may or may not be exactly where we want it. The crew continues to stack block. To reduce heat loss and air infiltration, all utilities enter under the slab. Pictured is the electrical cable and phone. Time to add the internal bracing, which will also serve as scaffolding. Note the many areas with horizontal strapping to brace the weak spots. So the last steps was to install number five vertical rebar that spans the height of the foundation. Okay, let's bring on the concrete. In, in the interest of the vibration scenario. First to arrive is the pump truck, followed by what will be one of seven cement trucks. While the crew makes sure that the concrete flows evenly to both sides of the hose, 
others being the inner and outer sides of the block to vibrate and settle the concrete. The crew was a bit tense at the start. A breach in the ICF wall while pouring the concrete can make for an expensive repair and a messy cleanup. One issue or potential issue when pouring concrete is it likes to go up and down, not sideways. Um, with the bottom of the window well, a full piece of wood getting concrete flow underneath was somewhat of a challenge. However, we were able to uh, vibrate the concrete to the point where it would flow. We're getting close to the top. It's taken three lifts to fill the foundation with concrete. Pouring concrete and simultaneously leveling the top of it. The strip of green foam is a temporary placeholder to overlap the adjacent garage slab. Carl trowels in a smooth finish to the top of the foundation. Ed measures for the three foot on center wall anchors and then sets them into the concrete. Oops, this wall is no longer plumb and had to be muscled back into position. Ed Herring was here from start to finish on the foundation. The mirage that you can see in there only come 10 feet high. So therefore you got two more feet of block in trying to straighten a wall when there's not a stable brace to pull uh -huh. it back and adjust it where you need to adjust it was kind of challenging. Uh, and that's why it was bowing a little bit uh, yeah, at the end of the pour and you had yeah. to wrestle with it to get back oh, in yeah. and into right. And then it was time for a cold one as Lynn celebrates with the crew for a job well done. The next day, the braces and scaffolding came down, leaving us with a well-insulated, thermally broken basement wall. Come see more about building a passive house in Maine at www.edgewaterhouse.com.